Today I want to share with you that it's God's will for you to prosper financially. This is not an area of your life that you are just left to yourself and to your own resources. But God wants to supernaturally release His power into your life and produce financial prosperity. As a matter of fact, I firmly believe that prosperity, financial prosperity was a part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus. That's what the scripture says, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that you through His poverty might be rich. If you were to take that verse in its context, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 is all talking about money, financial prosperity. Some people have tried to say that this is talking about that spiritually, emotionally you were poor, but now you're blessed through the Lord. Well, those things are true, but this is talking about in context finances. Jesus became poor so that you through His poverty might be made rich. And just as I taught about physical healing, being a part of the atonement of Jesus, what He came to this earth to suffer and accomplish for you, financial prosperity is also a part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus. Once again, the same word, sozo, Greek word, sozo, S-O-Z-O, that was translated forgiveness of sins is also translated prosperity, healing, and deliverance. It refers to all of these areas. The Lord has blessed you with an ability to prosper financially just as much as He has forgiven your sins and He has healed your body and He has delivered you from demonic power. It says in 3 John verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Man, that's a strong statement. He says, I wish above all things. And this puts a high priority on financial prosperity. This is God's will. The word wish here is literally, I will, is what he's talking about. He's speaking for God and God is saying, it is my will for you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's exactly what that Greek word sozo means. And so there are an abundance of scriptures that talk about prosperity. Jesus spent more time teaching on financial prosperity than he did on heaven or hell are directly talking about forgiveness of sins. It was an area that he used because it's a physical, tangible thing that people could relate to. And Jesus blessed people. Jesus multiplied food and he didn't do it in a skimpy way and just give people enough to barely get home. He let them eat until they were absolutely full and he took up all the fragments that were left over in Mark chapter 6 and he had an abundance of food left, more left over after he got through feeding thousands of people than he had before he started. He's a multiplier. He's a giver. He's an increaser. You can look in the scriptures and find that people who followed God were blessed financially. Abraham became a man of great substance, so much so that kings came out and said, the land isn't big enough to handle you and the rest of our nation. Abraham had as much possessions of herds and flocks and gold and silver as entire nations did. Isaac did the same thing. Jacob did the same thing. You can go on through and look at Solomon. David and Solomon were super blessed. It is a principle in the Word of God that God blesses people financially who serve Him. Psalms chapter 35 verse 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of His servant. God is pleased when you prosper. God is not pleased when you don't prosper. Now, one of the things that has hindered people from receiving financial prosperity is because they think that the New Testament teaches that you're supposed to be poor. And they teach that, uh, many people will teach that money is the root of all evil. That's not what it says. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In other words, greed, the love of money is the root of all evil. Did you know that there are some people that have virtually no money that lust, love money? They have greed for money. Matter of fact, in my experience, I found out that lots of times poor people spend more time thinking about money than the wealthy do. 
They are more focused on money. They are more greedy. This isn't saying that money is evil. If you think that, well, then you ought to send all of your money to me and get rid of that filthy lucre. <laughs> Amen. That is not what the Scripture is saying. All of us have to have money. But you have to not put money as your God or as your source. You can't trust in your money. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it says, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth, that He might establish His covenant, which He sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. That didn't say that God gives you money directly. It says God gives you the power, an anointing, an ability to get wealth. God is not going to give you money, but what He will do is give you an anointing, His favor and ability so that whatever you set your hand unto will prosper. A lack of understanding this has caused some people to just be passive and to pray and ask God to bless them financially, but do nothing to make it happen. God said He would bless what you set your hand unto. A hundred times zero is zero. You've got to do something. You've got to move in faith. Faith without works is dead. Believe that God has given you this power and then do something. And notice the last part of this verse in Deuteronomy 8.18. It says the reason He gave you this power to get wealth is so that He could establish His covenant on the earth. The true purpose of prosperity is not selfish. It's not greedy. It's so that you can give to other people, so that you can establish His covenant here on the earth. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing that is good, that he might have to give to him that needs. That scripture says the reason you work is so that you can have money to give to others who need. The reason to work isn't to pay your bills and to get food and car and transportation. It's so that you can be a giver. Now, God knows that you need to eat and that you need a place to live. He will take care of those things, but the real focus ought to be giving. You live to give. You don't give to live. You sh your focus should be that you want to be a blessing to other people. If you've ever heard one of these people come up and say something like, well, you know, God's blessed me and I'm taken care of and I would never believe in this prosperity gospel where you give and it's given back unto you. I've got enough. I don't need any more. I'm not asking God to multiply it back. I think that that's selfish. You know what? It's that attitude that's selfish because that person thinks money is only for them. And as soon as they get their house and their car and their food and they get their needs met, then they don't care about the rest of the world. They don't want any more prosperity. They are only thinking about themselves. That is a truly selfie, selfish, greedy attitude. God wants you to prosper so that you can be a blessing to other people. Here's another scripture that verifies that. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. The reason God makes His grace abound towards you is so that you can abound unto every good work so that you can help other people, so that you can bless them. It's not just so that you can take care of yourself. A true definition of prosperity is having enough of God's supply to accomplish God's instructions, to be able to do the things that God told you to do. Prosperity isn't measured in the size of house or car that you have and the jewelry and the fancy clothes. True prosperity is measured by how much you give away. How much are you able to give? See, it's all about giving. And if some of you are wondering, well, if I give like you're talking about, what's going to happen to me? Here's the answer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. The things that he was talking about here in context are what you eat, where you sleep, what you're clothed with. If you will put money first and foremost to bless others and to promote God's kingdom, then God will supernaturally take care of your needs better accidentally than you've ever done it on purpose before.